Welcome back to Awaken. We're going to take the same free-to-play team into Tulpa and into Queen of Tide 12. For Tulpa, it's a little bit of a long run, but it is free-to-play. We all have access to it. And for Queen of Tides, it's a little bit longer too, but we can make it faster if you have a strong Zatlux. I'll show you the gear and I'll show you the speeds at the end of this video, though you don't need any special speeds. You just take the champions you have because it takes such a long time to get through the waves and you just throw them in here. We've got Rodira and Veluk, two elites, and then we have two Synthesis Fusion Champions, which is Hakrin and Santis, which you're going to build anyways. Hakrin, this guy right here is broken for every content in the game. And when I say every content, every single content. So if you don't pull him, you're going to want to fuse him. And then Santis is pretty amazing. She's top tier for putting up all the poisons and getting through content. So you're going to want to make her as well. Those two are just amazing together. And then we have Veluk, which you've seen me use so many times, and then Rodira as well. But we're going to take this team into Queen of Tide. Right now we're on Topa 12, which really you wouldn't think this team would beat Topa 12, but it beats it so easy. We're going to speed up through the waves. The only problem with this team on Topa 12 is it takes so damn long to get through these waves. You're not going to die. Your Hakrin is really high on defense, but low on HP. So Tulpa, the boss, will always attack him, which is good because he can mitigate a lot of that damage, even though we're weak affinity, weak element. Let's just go really quickly through this. We zone in, we're targeting only the boss, and we do have a region spell along with this life spell to where when you take fatal damage, you actually stay alive for that round. It's really handy to put on here just in case something goes crazy. I don't think anybody got low enough for it to actually activate, but it's good to have. Why not? There's nothing else in here that we need. We don't need decreased defense because we're just killing him by all the poisons we're putting up. So make sure you use these two spells. They will save you, even if you're bringing an, an all-fire team in here to DPS Topa 12 down, which is actually pretty gear-dependent, like really heavily gear-dependent. It's good to have this spell. Although they did just make his counterattack not hit as hard in the last update, which is good because it was crazy. You can't come in here with high defense to stop all these decreased defense being put on you. And you can't come in here with enough attack to take down this shield without getting blown up. But did you see there how many poisons we had up? It's insane. We had up so many poisons by the time he got under 50% HP and applied that big shield. And if you don't take that shield off him and do enough damage when he hits you in two turns, your whole team's dead. I mean, completely dead. I mean, if you have this shield up, you're going to survive that one hit. But then he's going to put up a shield again in a couple turns. You're going to die. But all these poisons took him down. That shield almost gone. It's crazy how many poisons we were able to stack up before he got underneath 50% HP. And that's what's going to happen every time. And he's going to attack Hakrin. He's at 4% HP now. <laughs> so easy. It was. It's that simple. He's always going to attack Hakrin, which has insane defense and mitigation and we never even got low enough to take those shields so you don't really need those shields but maybe if your gear's not strong enough you might need that it did take six minutes and 43 seconds to get through that run so a very long run but if you don't have unlimited energy if you're doing 10 runs at a time and maybe on your computer or your phone and you can do the eco mode it'll be okay same team into Queen of Tides 12. We're going to jump forward through all of these again because it takes a while to get through here. We are going to attack the right crab first and then the boss. So make sure you have it set up that way. I don't know if I was blocking it, but make sure you turn off the ultimate abilities and the special abilities of Santis and Veluk by selecting those portraits down there. When you have these portraits selected, that means they won't do any other ability, but they're basic. And that's what we want from those two. Just those poisons from their basic and the passive ability on Baluk will still happen. So we're set there. Now we're going to go all the way to the boss. Easy times. I mean, this group is insane. Hakrin makes this group insane, first off, because he gives us increased defense from his passive, the blue dwarf right there. And he gives us the 45% additional HP. Once we get three stacks, that's 45% additional HP on all of our champions. Plus he gives us passively additional defense based off of his defense. So it's so easy to slow play through a lot of this content with him. And you're going to use him on bosses. You're going to use him on special event bosses, going through Doom Tower Hard, going through Doom Tower Mythic, 
You're going to use that little dwarf everywhere. We apply the poisons, we kill the right crab, and now we're just applying poisons to the boss. Nobody is down low at all. It's, it's easy. We'll skip forward, and the boss is about to die. This run took about the same time. Though, you can take out Hakrin and put in your Zatlux, as long as your Zatlux can clear the waves, if he's strong enough to. And this team will beat this boss in 2 minutes and 50 seconds to 3 minutes. That's my normal team. This team with Zatlux. So just keep that in mind. If you want to do a speed run, same exact team, take out Hakrin, put in Zatlux, make it through there. As long as your team's strong enough. You have to have decent gear, because then we're not having all that additional HP and defense from Hakrin. Total duration, so it was somewhere around seven minutes. It was still a seven minute run. <laughs> Pretty long run. Let's look at the gear on these champions so you can get an idea of what I ran with them. Santa's first, she's in a healing revival set to get HP back. It's pretty good to put her in this if you're being fancy and you want to get up more poisons quicker you can put her in a curse set so she has a chance to do her basic ability again very strong to put on her as long as she's surviving i probably need to transition to that get some plus 15 gear 15 over here and put her in a curse set that way i can get faster runs survivability and focus to apply those poisons all my heroes are always glyphed so if you don't see me cover that just assume that they're always glyphed out Hakrin over here with gear to give him defense, defense, and defense. Again, he's got really low HP, so the boss in Tulpa is always going to target him. And these are his total stats I have. 3,373 defense. We've got that HP. Slow speeds. It really doesn't matter. We're taking our time getting through those waves with these two teams. You'll be absolutely fine. Then he does the ultimate ability to get that HP up. Three stacks of this, 45% additional HP. Then if you do have him ascended... You're going to get 20% of his defense to your whole entire team. And if you don't, still 10% is very strong. So don't worry about it. You'll eventually get there. He is even just plain. He's amazing. Then we come over to Valuk. Valuk has a revival set on. As, no, he's got, a, he's got a, a curse set on to take additional turns. He did have a revival set on before. Now he's got a curse set to get that basic ability to try to apply poisons. So maybe I need to take this set over to my Santis to make sure make her clear content quicker. His total stats are health, defense, a little bit of speed. And then, of course, we've got focus again to apply the poisons with his passive ability whenever our allies are hit to apply a poison. And then his basic ability. If you have Methasia, if you have Blackhorn, yes. They're leagues and leagues better than Rodira, so use them instead. Even if you have Yolanda going through Queen of Tide with the team you just saw, she'll work out perfectly. So you don't have to level up Rodira, but she is really fun, especially if you don't have options. Blackhorn and Methasia are just too damn good. So don't even worry about her if you have those other two. Just play those other two. We've got gear on her, a revival set to give her some life to keep her alive. I don't really feel like she needs this, but it doesn't hurt. It's always good to have that additional... Health coming in every turn. And her total stats are HP and defense. She's low on defense. I got to admit right now, I've got her very low on defense. I want to get that defense up higher to mitigate damage. Her speed doesn't need to be anywhere near this fast. I don't know what I'm really doing with her. We could use focus for her basic ability for attack down at a 50% chance. But survivability is the number one thing in HP. Get her HP moderately high, but you really want high defense too. She does do healing based off of her max HP, but it's not as important as keeping her alive. So defense there at 50% and health. I probably switched to defense over here at 50%, only one HP. And then I need to bring up this flat defense and this flat HP as well to make her stronger. And then she'll be set. But if you have Hakrin in your team like we do, then you can kind of be laxed on the gear you have for your heroes. Let me know your thoughts on this team beating Tulpa and Queen of Tide on 12 down below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you all in a video soon.